Hello and welcome to the presentation. In this video, we'll go through questions on hypoglycemia. If you haven't done yet, don't forget to subscribe and also follow us on social media. All right, question number one. All of the following are neuroglycopenic symptoms of hypoglycemia, except. So remember the word they're using is except. So we have A, confusion, B, drowsiness, anxiety, and visual changes. Take a moment and choose your answer. Before we get to the answer, let's break up hypoglycemia into two parts. So first we have the neurogenic or autonomic, and we also have the neuroglycopenic. Let's start out with the neurogenic. Remember, neuro just refers to nerves, and we're referring to the autonomic nervous system, and more specifically, the adrenergic or cholinergic nervous system. When our glucose levels are low, this will lead to activation of these nervous system, and this will lead to a host of symptoms, which includes trembling, the person may have palpitations, sweating, anxiety, hunger, and also nausea. Now moving on to neuroglycopenic. So again, neuro refers to the nerves, and then glycopenic uh, refers to uh, when there's a deficiency of glucose to a specific organ, and for example, the brain in this situation. And when this happens, this can also lead to a host of um, symptoms. So the person may have difficulty concentrating, difficulty speaking, they may feel confused, weakness, they may feel dizzy, can lead to visual changes as well. If severe enough, a person may have a seizure and also lead to a coma. So let's go back to the question. So we know all the following are no glyco glycopenic symptoms, except, so we know confusion is neuroglycopenic, drowsiness is correct as well. Anxiety, no, so anxiety is neurogenic. So we know the answer here is anxiety. All right, question number two. JT is hiking with a group of friends and begins feeling sweaty and his hands feel shaky. He sits down and complains he feels dizzy and unable to concentrate. He checks his blood glucose levels and his reading is 3.6 millimoles per liter. Now what is the severity of JT's hypoglycemia? Is it mild, moderate, severe, or he's not experiencing hypoglycemia, he's just tired? Take a moment and choose your answer. All right, before we dive into the answer, let's look at the severities of hypoglycemia. So we have mild, moderate, and severe. Let's start with mild. So generally with mild, there's going to be neurogenic symptoms, so autonomic. So that can be uh, cholinergic or adrenergic mediated. So that it will include hung, uh, hunger, trembling, sweating, palpitations. And generally the person is able to self-treat. They don't need assistance. In moderate, it can be both neurogenic and also neuroglycopenic. Remember, neuroglycopenic will include confusion, dizziness, uh, weakness, uh, difficulty concentrating. And still, generally, the person is able to self-treat. With severe, it's a little bit different. The person, it may include neurogenic and neuroglycopenic symptoms, and the person can also be unconscious. So it can also include a seizure, it could include a coma. The glucose levels are typically less than 2.8 millimoles per liter. And in this situation, you can see that a person will need assistance. It's important to remember the neurogenic and also the neuroglycopenic symptoms. All right, so back to the question. Let's go through his symptoms. So he's feeling sweaty and his hands feel shaky. So these fall into the neurogenic uh, symptoms. So we might be thinking mild, but if we look on further inspection, he's feeling dizzy and, and unable to concentrate. So that falls into the neuroglycopenic symptoms. His glucose readings are 3.6, and he's also conscious. He's not unconscious. So from this, we can conclude that he's having moderate, because he has both neurogenic and neuroglycopenic. He's also conscious, and he very likely would be able to self-treat as well. So our answer here is moderate. All right, question number three. This is in regards to JT from the previous question, who is having a hypoglycemic attack. So what should JT do at this point? A, drink some water and continue hiking. Treat with 15 grams of a fast-acting carbohydrate. Inject 1 milligram of glucagon. Or no treatment is needed at this time. Choose your answer and let's go to the next slide. Alright, before we get to the answer, let's look at how to address hypoglycemia. There's more information in Chapter 14, Hypoglycemia, in the 2018 Diabetes Clinical Practice Guidelines, so please refer to that. Now, the first step is to recognize the symptoms. Is it neurogenic or is it neuroglycopenic or both? So is it mild, moderate, severe? The next stage is that we're going to check the blood glucose levels if possible, so if they're less than 4. Remember in this example with JT, they were 3.6 millimoles per liter. At this stage, we're going to treat with 15 grams of a simple carbohydrate. The, the types of carbohydrate are very important to know. We will come back to the different types in the next coming questions. 
after ingesting the 15 grams of the carbohydrate, we're going to retest in 15 minutes. If it's below 4 millimoles per liter, we're going to retreat with 15 grams of a carbohydrate and then test again. Once it's above 4, we can move to the next step. Generally, after this, a person should consume 15 grams of carbohydrate plus a protein source. If a meal is due at that time, for example, if it's lunchtime or supper time, they will go ahead with uh, that meal at the time. All right, let's go back to the next question. All right, so let's get to the answer. So what should JT do at this point? The answer is treat with 15 grams of a fast-acting carbohydrate. Let's look at the other options here, though. So drink some water and continue hiking. If you drink some water, he'll get hydrated, but it would not help his hypoglycemia. So A is eliminated. Injecting one milligram of glucagon, yes, that could help bring the sugars up, but glucagon is something that's going to be used when a person is, for example, unconscious, when they're having a severe hypoglycemic attack, they're unable to self-treat. And again, glucagon is injected, so this is something that would be used when a person is unable to take something orally. And finally, no treatment is needed at this time. His levels are low, 3.6 millimoles per liter. He needs to be treated for the hypoglycemic attack. If nothing is done, his, um, it'll just progress and get worse. So the answer is B. Question number four. All of the following are examples of 15 grams of a simple carbohydrate except 150 mils of a regular soft drink, 15 mils of honey, three Lifesaver candies, one popsicle. All right, let's go through each option. So for A, 150 mils of a regular soft drink, that is correct. It could also be 150 mils of juice, for example. The next one is 15 mils of honey, or three teaspoons of honey is correct as well. One popsicle is correct. And from elimination, we can see that three Lifesaver candies is incorrect. Three Lifesaver candies would not be enough. We'd actually need to eat about six Lifesavers each lifesaver is about 2.5 grams. All right, let's go to the next slide and see it, some more examples of the different carbohydrates. So here we have just an example of 15 grams of simple carbohydrates. These are important to know. This can be found in table four, examples of 15 gram carbohydrate for treatment of mild to moderate hypoglycemia. And this is in chapter 14, hypoglycemia of the 2018 Diabetes Clinical Practice Guidelines. So I won't go through all of this, but these are uh, examples of um, the simple carbohydrates that could be used to treat hypoglycemia. So it's important to know these. All right, that concludes the presentation. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more practice questions like this. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Again, thanks for watching.